Microsoft just announced that Project Online is going to be retiring on September 30th, 2026. Now, don't worry, this doesn't mean that Microsoft Project itself is going away. I'll talk more about that later. But there will be several folks who are using Project Online who will be impacted by this announcement. So in this video, I want to explain what this even means and how those folks can plan for this change going forward. Okay, so right off the bat, I know that there's gonna be some confusion, so let me reassure you that Microsoft Project Desktop, the application that's right behind me, is not going away. This thing is sticking around and Microsoft is going to continue to support it. Project Server is also not going away. That product is going to stick around. So in order for you to really understand what this change is and who it actually affects, I think it's necessary that I explain what these products even are, Project Desktop, Project Server, Project Online, Planner, what are all these different things? If you're already familiar with what the difference is between those different products, then I recommend skipping to this timestamp on the video. Okay, so let me explain to you what we would call Microsoft's project management tools. First off, we have Microsoft Project Desktop, we have Project Server, Project Online, Project Web App, Project for the Web, and planner. What's the difference between all of these? Microsoft has made it quite confusing for us to understand. So let me start by explaining what we mean when we say Microsoft Project Desktop. This is what usually people refer to when they say Microsoft Project. This is the application that's actually installed locally on your computer that you use to build and manage schedules with. It comes in two different variations. There's Microsoft Project Standard, and there's Microsoft Project Professional, but they're both really kind of the same application. All the actual work to build and manage a schedule and create the MPP file is done in Project Desktop. Next, let's talk about Project Portfolio Management Tools. This is important for us to be able to understand what Project Online and Project Server are. So a Project Portfolio Management Tool is a tool that is going to facilitate an organization managing an entire collection of projects in order to achieve some type of goal or be able to do reporting or just have all the data in a centralized location. These are always going to be server-based because there needs to be some type of central location where all the data is going to be stored that the organization can access. There are two variations of a PPM tool that Microsoft has created. One is Microsoft Project Server, and one is Project Online, the thing that's being retired. It's important to understand that a PPM tool like Project Server or Project Online are not actually scheduling tools themselves. In fact, the way that we can think about them really is just that they are databases that are going to store our project's data and that we can interact with from that database. Microsoft Project Server is an on-premise variation of a PPM tool. When I say the word on-premises, what I mean is that the server that stores all the data is actually going to be physically located within a building that your organization controls. This means that organizations who are using Project Server are actually responsible for the maintenance of the server themselves. This can be a good option for organizations that create and manage projects that contain sensitive information. It avoids all of the security concerns of sending your project data through the internet to a cloud service. Project Online, on the other hand, is a cloud-based variation of Microsoft's PPM tool. When I say cloud-based, what I mean is that the server is going to be owned and managed by Microsoft, and that makes Project Online very easy to implement. There are two ways that you can actually purchase Project Online, both of which are subscription-based services. The first one is called Planner and Project Plan 3, or P3. The second is called Planner and Project Plan 5, or P5. So Project Server and Project Online really function exactly the same way. The only difference is that one is an on-premises PPM solution and one is a cloud-based PPM solution. You'll interact with the data for both Project Server and Project Online through something called Project Web App. That's gonna be our front-end interface for both Project Server and Project Online. It's a way that we can look at the published data through a user-friendly view. 
Okay, so it's web-based, it's gonna be based in SharePoint technology, it's gonna look like a SharePoint site, and anyone with the proper permissions can view information from your project server or project online database through the web browser. So that means your project managers, your schedulers, team members can view published project data. Here at SSI, we have a project online account and this is what our project web app looks like. So as you can see on here, this is just a SharePoint site. I can go and look at all the projects that have been published into our server. Here they all are. If I wanna see details of these projects, I can click on any one of them. So just putting all this together so you can see how these different tools interact with each other. If I were to open up Microsoft Project, I have pre-configured Microsoft Project to be able to connect to our project server or project online database. So you see I have this dialogue when I open it and I can choose my server database here to work out of. I'll click OK. And so everything in the project desktop application for the most part is the same. There are a few differences. When I go to open a project, I have the option to open a project off of our server database. So we can see that here. I could open up this project called Kenco Project. And I have the ability to check the project out, make changes, check it back in, and then publish or transmit the data of this project up to our project server or project online database, which then can be viewed through project web app. I think this right here is a good visual representation so you can see these different entities. We have our Microsoft Project desktop application, project server or project online database, and project web app, each of which are separate entities. And again, all the work to actually build and manage the schedule is done in the Project Professional Desktop Client. Once we have built a schedule, we can transmit it to our project online or project server database. And then it becomes available for different team members or people in our organization to view through Project Web App in a browser. The last thing to talk about is what's called Planner or Planner Premium. It is really uh, a browser-based simplified task planning and team management tool. This is the icon for it right now. What I want you to know is that it's really not comparable in terms of features to the Microsoft Project desktop app. It lacks most of the functionality or advanced scheduling things that you can do in that application. And so it's really not a good alternative for anyone who has to plan any type of complex schedule. If you manage a small team with small projects and you just wanna manage your tasks and your team members, then Planner may be good a good option for you. It's gonna be a lot more similar to a tool like Smartsheet or Monday.com. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's now look at this article from Microsoft. Hopefully it will make a bit more sense now and let's see what it's really telling us. So starting with the title, Microsoft Project Online is retiring, what you need to know. After more than a decade supporting project managers and teams around the world, Project Online will officially retire on September 30th, 2026. This update is exclusive to Project Online and does not affect Project Desktop, Project Server, or Planner. So we know what all those different applications are now. Big takeaway is that this is only affecting Project Online. So Project Desktop, the tool that most of us are going to be using to actually build schedules, and Project Server, those tools are not going away. Moving down here, they explain why the change is happening, which I'm just going to paraphrase for you. They want to be able to integrate AI, and Project Online is built on sort of a legacy architecture, and they can't integrate AI systems with it. So what this means is that on September 30th, 2026, Project Online will no longer be available. Project Desktop remains available and is not impacted by this change. Let's look at the transition options that Microsoft lays out. Now, the first and foremost thing that they say is that you can transition to Planner. Now, for most of the people that are probably going to be watching this video, that is not a viable solution for you because Planner just lacks the features. Microsoft is really wanting to push users to Planner as their new tool. 
But I do think that what Microsoft fails to understand is that many of the people who are actually using Microsoft Project and Project Online, it's just a very different customer than the customers that would use the features that exist in Planner. If they want to build a tool that's going to be closer to Smartsheet and Monday.com, that's fine. But they should really just view that as a completely separate product targeting a separate co consumer. So that's just a little bit of a rant there. The next transition option that they offer is switching to Project Server Subscription Edition. Now, some of you might be curious, is that the same thing as Project Server? And the answer is yes. Project Server used to not be on a subscription service. It used to just be a one-time purchase, but now it is a subscription. So if you want to implement Project Server at your organization, you're gonna have to pay a subscription fee to Microsoft. But functionally, it's gonna be really the same thing as what you have been doing with Project Online if you are using Project Online. The last thing that they recommend is Dynamics 365 Project Operations. I personally am not familiar with that, so I'm not gonna comment on that option. I just wanna scroll down and highlight one other thing, and that is what is happening to Project Server 2016 and Project Server 2019. There's a little bit of confusion of is Project Server also being retired, and that is not the case. Project Server is still sticking around, However, Microsoft is retiring what they called Project Server 2016 and Project Server 2019. This is sort of the same thing as Microsoft ceasing support for Excel 2013 or Excel 2010 or Windows 7 or Windows 10, right? So they've just moved on to the next iteration in the series, but the product is still the same and it's still continuing to be supported by Microsoft. So don't worry. If you were concerned, Project Server is not going away. So if your organization does not use Project Online, then there's nothing that you need to worry about right now, and there's no action that you need to take. Everything that you're doing will continue working just as it has been. If your organization is using Project Online, then unfortunately it is time to start thinking about what a transition plan looks like and what the next steps may be. Don't worry. There are options that are out there that will still allow you to use the Microsoft Project desktop application. And so I wanna talk about what those options are for you to end this video. So option number one would be to transition to Project Server. This option is the closest you can get to keeping the experience exactly the same so that your team doesn't have to learn a set of new tools. What you want to do if you're transitioning to Project Server is to find a Project Server partner. These are people who are certified to actually implement Project Server at the organization, so they set up the whole server themselves, they configure it, they teach you how to use it and your IT team, what to do if anything breaks, and they're there to support you throughout the duration of time that you have the server set up at your organization. This is my personal recommendation to transition to Project Server. Option number two would be to look into third-party project portfolio management tools, so not tools that are created by Microsoft, but tools that work with the Project Desktop app. There are several organizations out there that are making these types of tools. Just make sure that you always schedule an actual demo, maybe get a trial of the software before you go and implement it, just to make sure that it can meet your needs and still fulfill some of the things that you were doing with Project Online. If option number one and option number two don't work for you, then option number three would be to connect with us here at SSI. We would love to hear about how you're using Project Online and how we might be able to possibly implement a solution for you going forward. Now, if you're really disappointed with this announcement, I think it's really important that you give your feedback to Microsoft. I'm not saying that Microsoft would listen to that feedback or roll back this announcement, but you never know. Run it up the chain at your organization, get people to get in contact with people at Microsoft, and who knows what could happen. I hope that you found this video to be helpful and useful to you. And if you're a Project Online customer right now, I hope this can help you get started on looking at what your options are going forward. Thanks everyone. I'll see you in the next video.